So the unconventional way that we heat and cool this place <laughs> is a little bit different. You know, when it gets real cold, we use we use our uh, our our waste oil heaters and our and our uh, firewood heaters. But for the average every day, when you walk in here and it was like you know 30 degrees outside, with this building being insulated, it'll be 50 in here. So I'll turn on the radiator. That's one of them that I'm going to show you. Is is a, it's a ground loop, and it's real simple. I put it in when I built a building, and it's been in here ever since, and it does a fine job. The other one uh, I use as a reefer unit off the front of a refrigerated trailer, and I use a reefer unit to cool it. So if I have a family get together or something like that up here, I can get the place nice and cool. For everybody so they're comfortable and it makes a world of difference so when you watch this uh, it's an unconventional way to to heat and cool your shop and I hope you enjoy it when I built this building I put two four inch sleeves down through the floor and out into the parking area outside and they're about six foot deep so what I did was I buried a thousand feet of three inch ballon slip plastic pipe six feet deep and about eight feet apart with a backhoe 500 out turns the corner 500 back so I took the radiator out of my old Euclid haul truck and I used Unistrut mounting it up off of the floor I took a furnace blower off of a off of a furnace I took the speed control so it's got low, medium, and high speeds. And I use a pool pump. So there's your pool pump, and I'm running an inch and a half line in and an inch and a half line out. And there's a screen in that pool pump, so if anything was to ever get in there, that it can get filtered out, you know. And then up here on the top, there's your three speed blower switch. They select your speed. So it always is 60 degrees all the time so if it's really really cold outside I'll run it and I run it on low to get heat out of it and if it's hot outside I run it on high to get cool air out of it and you see down here on the bottom that's your condensation tray so when you're running it and you're cooling with it that whole radiator will condensate water just like an air conditioner and that pan will catch it I put a drain on the bottom and then if you look you'll see that little plastic pipe and that little plastic pipe goes all the way up to that Freon jug right there and you see the little bowling pin inside of that plastic jug that tells me that there's adequate amount of water in there for the system to run on. I keep it elevated like that so that it always keeps positive pressure on the radiator and then right here in the front you'll see I got a little gauge there that if it was to start building pressure or something was to happen it would it would let you know that but it's a constant 60 degrees and they are about six cores thick there's a lot of meat in one of them I mean you could probably use anything you want to use but I had a Euclid radiator so that's what I used now I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you the rest of the story. When I have parties up here, how I cool this place when I have parties up here. So sitting about in the middle of my shop, from one end to the other, I put a reefer unit on the side. When I worked in a trucking company, I used to take care of these things all the time, and I always liked Thermo King, and uh, that's what I put in there. That's the fuel tank. Runs a four cylinder Isuzu engine. It's got the radiator and the condenser and the evaporators on the inside. So, you know, they're made to be on a rig that's running down the highway 60 miles an hour. So on this one I poured a footing 
and I raised it up off of the footing so it could get air. And then I went back and I cut a lot of extra holes in the doors so it could get rid of all that heat. Especially this big hole that I cut in this top door so that it can throw all that heat out when the thing's running. This fan right here is the one that runs the, the condenser and the radiator. And on the other end of that shaft is the fan identical to this that runs the evaporator. If you put it on high speed and you walk in front of it in the shop, it'll blow your head off. That baby puts some air out. So, the nice part about them is, is they've got a thermostat down here on the bottom and you set it to whatever temperature you want it to be. So if you want it to be zero, you set it for zero. If you want it to be 70 degrees, you set it on 70 degrees. It's got auto start stop, so when it gets to a certain temperature, it'll run until it gets to that temperature, and then it'll slow down, and then it'll shut itself off, and it'll sit there until the temperature changes. So they're pretty efficient. I figured if they're running wide open, and it's really hot in there, and I'm going to have a get together with my family or something, and I'm trying to cool the place off, and that thing's sitting there running on high, as hard as it'll run to get it cooled off. It probably is drinking about nine tenths of a gallon of diesel fuel an hour. There's two great big drain hoses that come out the side down here on the bottom, and they're the same size as a garden hose. When it's cooling, both of them hoses will be running just like it's uh, coming out of the garden hose. That's how much, that's how big that unit is. It'll, it'll really in about three or four hours, it'll really make it nice in there. We'll fire it up and let you watch it run. Auto, auto. Now it should start itself all by itself, but it has to go through all of its checkpoints and then it has to preheat uh, glow plugs and all that sort of stuff. But you see how big the opening is here where the fan's at and how many. you can't hear me talk inside the only thing you hear inside is the fan running and it's it, it's blowing air so hard that there's a little noise from the air blowing you see where I ran a piece of gutter from the exhaust pipe on the top all the way up to the very top up there so you see where the exhaust pipe goes all the way to the top of the building so it gets rid of all that exhaust up there and that helps that helps quiet it down that keeps it quieted down so this particular unit is an SB1 2000 and it had uh, Freon in it that was at one time was R12 that's an older unit and I pumped it all out and I put uh, different oil in it and I put 134A in there everybody says that's not going to work it works just fine it works just fine I built this little wall here to help keep the keep the noise away but it's not too bad once it gets running you don't notice it too much you can see where I anchored it down to the concrete down here on the bottom pieces of angle iron and then that's a regular frost footing that it sits on and on the inside it's just it has a styrofoam up against it and then I have where it sucks its air in I have a couple of big screens in there so that it doesn't pick up dust or anything like that something that's easy to clean so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these two doors off all three the two bottom ones and the top one and I bought another unit, and I'm going to take you out here and show you that unit. And then I'm going to take the, the unit that I'm putting in now is an SB3 Smart Reefer. And it's bigger, and it's got more cooling capacity, and it's 
it's just a whole lot nicer and I think I'll be better off so I'm going to change it out but I'm going to take you around there and show you that one now so I've been working on this one a little bit trying to get some problems ironed out I had some fuel leaks and some belts and just a bunch of little piddly stuff these are the two drains that drain the condensation off the evaporator on the inside that's how big they are and when this thing's running they run a full stream ahead let me tell you but I took the doors off because I'm going to use the doors on the other one the doors that was on this one was damaged not too bad but uh, it's an SB3 smart reefer and it's a lot newer and I think I'm going to be better off with it but I'm going to fire this one up for you and let you this one when it starts it'll go through its cycle and its system to make sure everything's okay and then the horn will come on and tell you to get away from it that it's going to start and then when it starts it'll run on low speed until it gets warmed up and once it gets warmed up which we're not going to let it run that long but once it gets warmed up then it'll go up to high speed cool and away it goes or high speed heat either way they heat and cool depends on what you set the thermostat for they're not efficient on heating as much as they are on cooling. On cooling, they really rock. But if you want to go in there and the shop's really cold and you want to put it on heat and run it on heat, it will heat that shop. It'll do it. It just, it's not as efficient on the heat cycle. But I'm going to put it on automatic and let you watch it. Put it on uh, cycle sentry on. So it should check itself out and then the horn's going to come on until you get away from it there's your horn and then after it glows and it preheats itself then it's going to fire itself up and away it'll go and this is the same <laughs> So on the inside, this is where it blows its air out. This is your evaporator core. You can see how massive of an evaporator core they have in them. They are pretty massive. And then there's a cover that covers all this up. I've got it off right now because there's some parts in here I'm waiting for on this defrost door. But there's a big shield that goes on here and then it sucks its air in down here across the bottom but for having a family get together so I told you it was a crazy way we do things around here <laughs> so, so if you like the video give us a, give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching